Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Now, before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription really helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. All right. So this is the third of a seven part series of New Zealand wine. This episode, last episode, the next one are reviews of New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, that, and they were all sent to me in conjunction with this really cool map from the Appalachian, Mar uh, Appalachian Marlboro Wine Organization. So all this was free, and uh, I uh, have free reign to review everything how I wish. Okay, uh, I stopped the stopped the scroll for a second there. Anyway, today's episode is a review of uh, a wine from Lawson's Dry Hills, founded by Ross and Barbara Lawson. They started as a vineyard in 1982. Ten years later, in 1992, they decided to produce wine from their vineyard under the Lawson's Dry Hills label. In 1995, Tim and Pauline Evil, or Evil, because it's two L's, uh, met the Lawson's. They started buying vineyards together. From this partnership, Tim and Pauline eventually bought the Lawson family shares. Ross passed away from cancer in 2009. He was instrumental in New Zealand's wine industries, moved to Screw Cap with the New Zealand Screw Cap Wine Seal Initiative in 2001. By 2008, 90% of New Zealand wines were using the enclosure. That still holds, holds true today with over 95% of New Zealand wines under Screw Cap. Uh, as we can see, we have I had one that's not, all right? So uh, Barbara is still going strong. Uh, she eventually sold her remaining shares to the company uh, of the company to the current owners and seem to be enjoying the retired life. Good for you, Barbara. Uh, much of it in Ireland and Rarotonga, one of the Cook Islands over 2,000 miles to the northeast. I say good for you. Uh, the Cook Islands is a self-governing island country in the South Pacific in free association with New Zealand. It comprises 15 islands. Links in the description to learn more all about that. They produce six, they produce wines from six different varieties. Sauvignon Blanc, Riesling, Chardonnay, Pinot Gris, Pinot Noir, and Gewürztraminer. They say their Gewürz is famous. I'll have to be on the lookout for it because I hadn't heard of it yet. Anyway, they have state-owned vineyards and source fruit from four main areas in Marlboro, Wairu, Waihopai, Omaka, and Awatere Valleys. This allows for a few things. Wines can be a blend of different vineyards depending on the vintage. This wine comes from two vineyards. It also allows a bit of insurance. So if one area has experienced some challenges that negatively affects the vintage, other areas may be able to mitigate that. They're not the only winery that does this, but they do mention this on their website. It also allows for a variety of single vineyard wines. They actually have a few different lines of wines from this main line to more specialized premium and even single barrel offerings. They make about 120,000 cases of wine. So not a small operation, but definitely a good size. They have a total staff of 18 people from vineyard to bottle to cellar door and everything in between. Right, so FYI, cellar door in New Zealand and also Australia and South Africa is the equivalent to a tasting room or retail shop. They export to about 15 different countries. Like almost all New Zealand wineries, they practice sustainability. Correction, they live it. So besides gaining the New Zealand Sustainable Wine Growing Certification, they also have two additional ones, the ISO 14001 and ISO 14064. I'll just directly quote from the Lawson's Dry Hills website about these two certs. We are a carbon zero certified winery having achieved the rigorous demands of the internationally recognized ISO 14064 and received certification from Toy2 EnviroCare. A Toy2 Carbon Zero certified organization has measured, managed, and mitigated the operational emissions of its organization, including business, travel, electricity, vehicles, and offices, in accordance with the ISO 14064 and the GHG protocol. In addition to our Toy2 Carbon Zero certification, we are fully certified under the ISO 14001 Environmental System. Uh, and they, they say ISO 14001-2015. Uh, 
the internationally recognized ISO Environmental Management System Standard 14001 standardizes a process to effectively control and continuously improve an organization's environmental performance. This enables efficient identification and control of the environmental impact of business activities, services, and products, as well as provide a systemized ability to benchmark and achieve environmental objections. I'm sorry, objectives. Whoops, sorry. That was the, and that's the end of the quote. Now, I've linked to the relevant organizations in Lawson's Dry Hills Telarc ISO 14001 cert below. The Telarc ISO 14001 was essential for finding what appears to be at least most of their estate-owned vineyards as it has the address for each one. I also have a direct link to Sustainable Wine Growing New Zealand standards that you can check out. The short version of these standards is that they focus on six areas. Soil, water, plant protection, waste, people, and climate change. Each of these areas have certain standards to meet to ensure your winery or vineyard is sustainable. Lawson's specifically highlights a few things they are doing. Their water and power usage on a per liter of wine basis is significantly lower than other wineries their size. Their bottles are lightweight and made in New Zealand using a minimum of 60% recycled content. Their wine labels use paper from certified sustainable forests. Cartons are 100% recycled fiber, and the shrink wrap they use is 100% biodegradable. They also have solar panels that provide up to 30% of their power needs. They capture rainwater from the winery roof and are restoring native wetlands at their Waihopai vineyard. While they mostly do mechanical harvesting, they reduce the number of passes, which reduces the amount of fuel they use. In addition to that, they're using newer, more efficient equipment. They also have EVs and charging stations at their cellar door. I think I hit the highlights. If you go to their sustainability page, they detail basically everything I just said. Plus there is a video from a couple years ago that provides more information. Like all the wines from the series, they are part of the Appalachian Marlboro Wine Organization. This means that the wine is 100% Marlboro fruit, so you won't find lower price slash quality fruit from outside the Appalachian to reduce cost. The winery is located in Marlboro and therefore produced in Marlboro. Okay, what about this wine? Let's get into the stats. The 2022 Lawson's Dry Hills Sauvignon Blanc. Suggested retail price, around $20 to $25. It's from the Marlboro GI, 100% Sauvignon Blanc, using Awatere and Waihopi vineyards, about 50-50 each. 96% cultured yeast stainless steel fermentation, 4% native yeast used French barrique fermentation. Vegan friendly, certified sustainable New Zealand wine, has ISOs 14001 and 14064. ABV 13%. The RS, 3.0 grams per liter. The pH, 3.3. The total acidity, or TA, is 7.3. Cellaring, drink now to two years. All right, a few notes. The vineyards are probably, specifically, the Blind River Vineyard in Awatere and the aptly named Waihopai Vineyard. However, there are other vineyards nearby on their vineyard map that are not estate-owned vineyards, from what I can tell. As far as the price, I had a hard time finding the wine in the U.S. I saw pricing around $20 to $25. It sells for $22 at the winery, which is about $13 U.S. All right, and uh, just so I, you can see, I mean, I have pictures of this map, but so you can see this map, uh, if you haven't watched the first episode of all this, definitely check it out. This map is super, super cool. Um, so thank you, Appalachian Marlboro Wine, for sending me the map in addition to all that. Okay, so let's get into the wine. Screw caps. I love screw caps. So, um, you know, one of the things that, that kind of drove this initiative to get screw caps in New Zealand and, and Australia is that, honestly, they were getting the crappiest corks. They were kind of getting the, the leftovers, the dregs. And these wineries were like, screw this. See what you did there. So, using the screw cap or the Stelvin enclosure, as um, the the official one is called, um, really provides you you have no corked wines. Um, the initial screw cap was like totally like no oxygen could get in, so you did have some kind. You did have a few. Um, um, reductive characteristics that would happen in wines, but they blow off. So basically sulfurous type things, but they blow off because once oxygen hits the wine, 
everything gets back to normal. But now these screw caps, they can mimic a cork. And I've mentioned this dozens of times in prior, in prior, um, video. So, uh, color looks great. You know, a good little medium straw color. I know I don't have the white background going on here, but, um, as far as tears, got good medium going on here. So yeah, right about that 13%, like the ABV is. So this one really kind of jumps out. So a lot of times with, with New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc specifically, and just Sauvignon Blanc in general, people talk about grapefruit. I don't always get grapefruit, but I do get it here. Matter of fact, I get ruby grapefruit, like Texas ruby grapefruit, like jumps out of the glass, really fresh. Like it just got picked. Now I kind of want to put a little, little sugar on there and just eat it raw. I haven't had one of those in a while. I'm not really supposed to have a grapefruit for personal reasons. Well, for reasons, I'll just put it that way. Nothing that's important, but I like having grapefruit every once in a while. So I also get a little bit of uh, papaya mango, get the tropical fruits going on here. Um, I do get a touch of that uh, pineapple and slash uh, bell pepper, a little bit of Hawaiian pizza thing going on here. It's not super, super prominent, but it's starting to become a little bit more noticeable. The grapefruit starting to kind of fade a little bit and other things are starting to kind of become more noticeable. So we're getting into the, and more of a balance on the aromas. I get a touch of minerality crushed rock, but it's pretty much citrusy uh, or not citrusy fruit, you know, the well citrus grapefruit and tropical fruit and a touch of that, touch of that bell pepper, not a ton of it. Let's let me taste it. Mm. Mm. Super balanced. So you've got that, you've got that um, grapefruit there going on, right? That ruby red grapefruit, along with that papaya, mango, guava, pineapple. You got like a little bit of that bell pepper in there, just a touch um, and a little rockiness, but it's really just a fruit forward, more fruit forward wine. Um, and comparing, so, if you're watching these in order, so I, I, this was the wine from last week. Um, this one had not as much of that of that citrusy or that fruit going on, but there's a little more, more of a balance with with the uh, minerality, but really no pyrazine, no no pepper. This one really feels more like your traditional uh, New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc or Marlboro specifically. Yeah, I mean everything is. I, these wines have been out for a while, so they're, they're warm enough, but it feels like it's because it's getting more oxygen in there. It's really getting that, um, everything's starting to become more to the, more to the fore, whatever, be more noticeable. Smells good. Tastes good. And this is excellent wine. I like this wine a lot. I like the wine a lot. I like this wine. Don't, don't get me wrong. But I like that one a lot. I think it's just because it's, it's just more in your face. This one, this one's more subtle. This one, I kind of want to really just be like, sit back and check it out. Cannot wait to get to, to the third one then. Absolutely delicious. Yeah. I had some chicken fajitas for lunch today. This would have been so... I I thought I still had some of the Bordeaux, white Bordeaux, because I was going to have like a glass with, with lunch. And I was like, oh, all I have everything New Zealand, Sauvignon Blancs, and I can't crack them open yet. Dang it, I better record that episode right now. So that's why I'm recording. Um, well, besides that, I need to, and I'm super behind. But this would have been fantastic with those chicken fajitas. Especially you combine it with the, I mean, the red, because we have red and green bell peppers. Um, you have onions in there. Um, it all would have been so, and then, yeah. Yeah. But Hawaiian pizza, tropical type chicken stuff, pork, all that kind of stuff. It's excellent. Yeah, you can find it absolutely buy this stuff and these, these guys did a great job all right well that's probably going to do it now so uh <laughs> so if you enjoy what i'm doing make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and then tell your friends and we'll see you next time hopefully with some lawsons cheers